conference rivals meet again for the third time tonight, but this go around, it's winner go home for both Tiffin Calvert and Old Fort, who meet with a trip to the regionals on the line here inside of Liberty Benton High School in Finlay, where the top team in the state seeks to stay unbeaten when the Garrett Spawn led Seneca's match up with Colin Nutter and the Stock Haters. And it's all streaming live and free into the palm of your hands. Next. Cheddar and sour cream. Flaming hot. Cheddar and sour cream. Flaming hot. Flamin hot. Cheddar, Cheddar and sour, sour cream. cream. Genius. Introducing Ruffles Flaming Hot Cheddar and Sour Cream. Own your ridges. Time be the charm for Old Four tonight, or will AP Pool Champion Tiffin Calvert remain undefeated? Let's find out together right here and now as our coverage of the Division Four District Championship from Finlay comes at you right now. Good evening, folks, and welcome to the Frito Lay pregame. I'm Brian Skronsky. Got Lynn Passett with me, and you know you hear about it all the time. Good things come in threes, Lynn. We got a three pack right here. There's the old adage that I feel like hasn't really been adding up, at least for me, this postseason, where it's tough to beat a team three times in a year. Seems like that's been happening a lot this postseason. But that's what we have yet again in this matchup. Old Ford trying to pull off the upset of the top team in the state. Yeah, it's a shame that these two teams have to meet tonight rather than in the regionals. But it should be a good ball game. The first time around, it was a three-point win for Calvert. And that was a game they won in the final seconds with a long three-pointer by Garrett Spawn. The second time around, as I spoke with head coach Eric Hoover of Old Fort earlier tonight, he said they showed up to play, we didn't. And thus it was a 19-point difference in that ball game. So are we going to see a repeat of game one? 
a repeat of game two or something somewhere in the middle. That's kind of where we're at. I know us media folks, we're rooting more for option A there. We'd like to see a good contest. Calvert fans probably don't want to hear that. They would love to just blow them out like they did in game two because they have been playing some fantastic basketball here of late. On the other side, though, for Old Fort, they've only lost four times this year. Twice, of course, have been to the Senecas. Other than that, really dominant team. Almost 63 points a game is what they put up, Lynn. And they hold their opponents in check, too, under 44. So this is a quality team led by a couple of studs. Well, I talked to head coach Eric Hoover, as I mentioned prior to tip-off tonight, and he told me 50 is the magic number. No one has scored 50 points yet this year against the Senecas. So they have made it a team goal to try and break that 50 mark tonight. If they do, he thinks they'll have a tremendous shot at winning. And we verified, we went back, we checked out the schedule. Indeed, nobody has been able to top 50 this year against the Senecas. They are dynamite on the perimeter, but arguably the best player in the game, that dude right there wearing the number 23 in the brown and mustard uniform, Colin Nutter, could be in line to be the Sandusky Bay Conference Player of the Year within their division. He just lights it up all over the floor, Lynn. He's smooth. He's tall, he rebounds well, and he's an excellent shot blocker. Well, he stands six foot seven. He averages 22 points a game. That led the River Division. He gets about 12 rebounds a game. That led the River Division. Right. And he has 55 blocked shots on the season. <laughs> that lot. led the River Division. So, needless to say, as goes Nutter, they are a peanut butter, nutter butter bunch out there tonight. And who doesn't like that tasty combination? Does it get much better than a little bit of nutter on top of something delicious? That's what he's been able to provide all year for, for the Stockaders. We're expecting nothing less here in this game, a rivalry game. These two teams joining the same conference a few years ago, and it's been spectacular the way that they have gone back and forth. Old Fort had the run of play a season ago. Now it has been the Seneca's turn. That's why they're the number one team in the state. Still undefeated, AP poll champions. Knocked off Carey, a very convincing game that you could watch live and free here on the OH Report on Tuesday night. Before that, took care of North Baltimore. And even though they're a very potent offensive team, really their top weapon is that defense and what they do to you on the perimeter. They are the top defensive team in the Sandusky Bay Conference. They're also the top offensive team. While wow. both of these two teams are the top two scoring teams and the top two defensive teams. So there's a reason they're here. But uh, Garrett Spawn, who we saw the other night score 21, he averages 17 a ball game. He leads the SBC in steals with nearly four a ball game. That could be huge because it was his steal and three-pointer that won the first game by three in the second game of the season. And I've seen Garrett Spawn now twice with my own eyes this year. He just is one of those guys, he's a true leader on the court. He can take you to the rack, he can pull up from deep, he defends well like you were just talking about. But we want to shine the spotlight on one of his senior teammates, Max Paul, who was our MVP on Tuesday night in the semifinal game. The season averages aren't going to blow you away, but he's part of this nucleus of a senior class, seven strong. All of them get into the rotation, Lynn. And on any given night, he told us in the post-game interview, someone's going to step up. He was that dude against Carey on Tuesday. Well, and at six foot four, he was needed on the boards against Carey, and he did his job there. But he also scored 18 points, 10 more than his season average, and he grabs about six or seven rebounds a night for you too. So he is going to be a key component tonight for Calvert. Looking forward to see what Paul and all the seniors bring to the table tonight for Calvert. They feel like this is their year. That's why they have not been beaten. Been able to overcome some odds in a few games. The old 4-1 probably at the top of the charts, I would say, with that game-winning three-pointer at the end. Since that game, though, they've kind of been blitzing the competition during the second half of the season, even in their regular season finale where they took on a tough late second contest against Western Reserve, a team that was also undefeated at 21-0 at the time, and they handled them pretty good. Well, you mentioned one word, and that was senior. When you have a lot of senior leadership, that can really carry you, especially when games get tight. Both of these teams are very heavy senior laden. Uh, as you mentioned, five of the top seven players are seniors for the Senecas. Same way for Old Fort. Now step aside and honor America with the playing of our national anthem, Star Spangled Banner.
Wow, one of the great parts about America, baby, the Star Spangled Banner National Anthem before a sporting event, and especially a high school sporting event, a rivalry one. So many great storylines have all come together for this one night of basketball, and we have got a packed house, Jim. When we were here um, on Tuesday night, we, we had a lot of space behind us. Tonight, people all around us over on the far side, almost full all the way to the top, and Liberty Benton, one of the biggest gyms here in the area. Yeah, they hold about 3,000 here, so uh, we're getting close to capacity tonight, and they're going to make a lot of noise. And I really think this could be a repeat of game one, and I'm sure that uh, head coach Eric Hoover of Old Fort is really hoping that that's the case. Well, Calvert, they've been rocking and rolling so far heading into tonight's game since the second half of their season. What do you think needs to continue for them to get another big victory? Well, for Calvert, it's pressure. You want to pressure the basketball on both sides, defensively, and then you want to pressure Old Force defense by knocking down some three-pointers and then feeding it inside and beating them at both phases of the game, inside and outside. But pressure is the key, and we saw them turn it up drastically against Carey in the second half the other night. I'm basically going to piggyback off of that, and I'm going to say they just need to do the pressure out on the perimeter. They're so lanky with their guards on the outside, kids that are standing above six foot tall, up to six foot three. So they've got the rangy athletes. They shoot it well, too, on the offensive end from downtown. One of the best three-point shooting teams that I've seen this season. So if they can just own from beyond the arc the matchup tonight, I think that can go a long way to helping them get the victory. Here's the starting lineups being announced here for the Stockaders. Take a look ourselves. Have Klaus, Havens, and Majors in the backcourt. Miles Miller, that gentleman right there, will be joined by Colin Nutter in the front court. And how about the fans, man? Well, we're seeing people dressed up in green, but a whole assortment of different variety outfits too, Lynn. I, I love it. Big representation from the Old Fort Stockaders uh, student body here tonight. And for the Old Fort Stockaders to win this ball game, as we mentioned earlier, the key is 50. They really want to hit that 50-point mark tonight, and they feel like if they do, they have a solid chance of winning this ball game. And mine, I mean, it's pretty obvious play on words here, but just feed the man, the rock, number 23, the leading scorer in the league. Get Colin Nutter the basketball. Good things tend to happen. Don't want him to try to force it, of course, Lynn. He's got a few other nice pieces around him. Miller definitely stands out on the inside and the interior along with Colin. But he's got to be the star tonight. He's got to shine the brightest, I think, in order for Old Fort to grab a big victory. He definitely is the best player on the floor tonight. The difference is going to be the surrounding cast. Are they going to give him the help that he needs? And I think uh, Miles Miller could be one of those uh, real keys tonight. He averages 13 a ball game. He also gets about seven rebounds. I think Miller is going to be a key. If he can really support uh, Nutter, they're going to have a good shot. Here are the starters tonight for the Senecas. All seniors, man. There's a lot of basketball that's been played by this group right here. And as I mentioned, too, a lot of great length. You see Ronsky, he's a guard. I believe he's about six foot four out on the perimeter. He can definitely knock down open looks when he gets them. Max Paul, who we highlighted in the pregame, another tall, lanky athlete that can play inside out. He's going to be joined by Beaker. Size Love's got some speed, and then Garrett Spawn. Everybody in the area knows what he can do. Well, we know that Colin Nutter of Old Forge stands six foot seven, but when you look at Calvert, they are very balanced. Six four, six two, six three. 6'2", so they have height as well, just not that one big guy that you kind of got to keep your head out for. Referees for tonight's contest. Your referee is Kevin Catafias. Umpires are Ryan Bowers and Ben Soroka. And Kevin Catafias is the referee, and normally they toss, but he has the option of letting one of his partners toss, and that's what he's doing. He's Letting one of his partners toss tonight. Don't see that very often. There we go. We're underway. Great matchup for you guys here tonight. Third meeting between these two schools this season. Seneca's won the first two. What will happen in round number three? Finding out together right now. Three-pointer goes up for Old Fort. Rebound comes off to 
the Senecas. And they push the pace right away. Beaker was phenomenal early on in the game against Carey a couple nights ago. Was able to get Nutter up off his feet, but missed the shot in tight. So it'll go back over to the Stockaders. Well, that's one trip that uh, Calvert will be kicking themselves for because you want to score anytime you're inside the paint, and that didn't happen. This will be an interesting matchup to watch, and you can see out front the officials are not going to let Jackson Sizelove and Garrett Spawn have their hands on them, guiding them on the defensive side of things. So immediately this officiating crew making its point, you're not going to play handsy tonight. First foul against Calver comes just 39 seconds into the contest. We'll see if those continue to add up as they lob it inside. Great entry, but Miller missed it point blank. Both teams have missed a what you call a bunny shot inside the paint, so both of them now have one they wish they could get back. Spawn directing traffic now gives off Ronsky. What a great atmosphere here at Liberty Benton tonight. Both cheering squads and sets of fans already at it. This is tournament basketball at its finest, folks, and small school tournament basketball, too, here inside of a huge gym. These teams not necessarily accustomed to playing in a place that holds this type of capacity, and we are almost chocked full to the brim. Especially if you, if you know the little can opener that uh, the Calvert Senecas play in. That, that is a, a little tin can. Ronsky drives baseline, draws a double. Now Beaker got fouled, no whistle. Majors got away with one. And we will get a whistle this time. First foul on Looks Miles, like Miles Miller. Miller. yep. Want to say what's up to everybody watching in Facebook and YouTube land tonight? Always love hearing from the fans, so drop us a comment as we see that dropping in for Beaker, the first points tonight. Yeah, Beaker with a nice left-handed move, and he kept it at the left hand all the way to the rim. Majors really being hounded by Spawn and Sizelove out front. That's what the Senecas have been doing to everybody this season, holding their opponents under 50 per game, all of them, as you mentioned, as that one rattles out, and it's another one and done. Yeah, rebound so far, 3-1 to one in favor of the Senecas, who lead 2-0. Aggressive move off the bounce, sets up Paul. He's going to drive in. Floater won't fall. But last touch by Calvert. I always kind of uh, laugh being an official when the fans don't agree with a call, but there are times when, as an official, you'll blow your whistle and you'll watch the players, and when they all turn their backs to walk the other way, they make the call for you. And that's what happened right there. Some of the uh, Calvert fans didn't think that that was really off of Old Fort, but you watch the players, and they turned and went the other way. The body language always tells the story of the players. As Nutter gets fouled inside, nice entry pass this time. And he'll get a chance for his first couple points of the night. As we take a look at it again on the Burson Bakey's insurance replay. Well, I'll tell you what, that was a pretty nice defense by Calvert right there. Nutter got the benefit of the call. Stockaders on the board at the 518 mark. Yeah, I'm sure that uh, Coach Hoover did not want to go two minutes and 45 seconds without scoring. You see Stockaders coming out with a 1-2-2, two, two, and they're going to create a turnover. Entry pass picked off, though. Spawn read that one. Had front position on Nutter. And another foul, and that's going to be the fourth already in the first three minutes. Yeah, both teams are finding out quickly that these officials are going to call the reach. Both teams trying to get a little handsy here early, and that's just not going to happen. Played three minutes and 2-2. Fouls also 2-2. Two, two. 
Stripped that time by Klaus. But the fadeaway J pure from Spawn. Oh, oh, it looked like. Definitely looked like Ethan Sauber had reached around from behind and patted that ball out of bounds. Now they reversed it. The other partner came in and uh, said, nope, I saw it. We've got it right. Yeah, when you see it on the Burson Bakey replay, no question about that one. Well done by the officials, too. I always appreciate when they'll get together, talk things out, and get the call correct on the floor. Kind of a rule of thumb in officiating. If your partner comes to you, you've already made up your mind you're changing the call, but you're still going to talk about it. Because he wouldn't come to you if he didn't see something differently. Double team comes on Nutter, and again, it's a giveaway here. Calvert making it very obvious. Anytime the ball goes down to Nutter, they're going to double team. Splish, splash from downtown. Blake Ronsky drops it through the bottom. Ronsky with a three ball and seven to two in favor of the Senecas. That was a deep one. Do we get an answer at the other end? No bueno. And tipped out of bounds to the Senecas. So an excellent start here for Tiffin Calvert. As they've got a five point edge. Just past the midway point here of quarter number one. Senecas just seem a little quicker and uh, just a little more on point right now. Here's Nick Palm in the corner who just checked in. Nice pass, finds Paul who got fouled. Nutter thought he got all ball. Well, he did get all ball, but he got him with the body. But you know, you do have verticality. He's allowed to have his space all the way. I thought he went straight up myself. I think that was a, a pretty decent play. That's now three fouls as a team against Old Fort. First, though, on Colin Nutter. Paul on the season, 79% from the foul line. This is an incredible shooting team from the charity stripe, is Tiffin Calvert. 69% as a unit. Exactly what? Calvert wanted. They've jumped out to a seven point lead here in the first quarter. And Old Fort can't buy a bucket. Klaus missed everything with that try. Now here comes Spawn in transition. He's got some space. Hesitation. Old Fort, beauty. Old Fort needs a timeout because they are really in la la land right now. They just don't have it together on either end of the floor. It's just going to be a 30 second timeout taken by the Stockaders. But check this out. You think Spawn's going to pull up for three, then you think he's going to pull up for the mid-range. All he does, take his time, such poise, and then he gets all the way to the cup for what's a really easy basket for him. Well, rebounds are 6-2 to two in favor of the Senecas. Free throws, each team's made two out of two. And uh, so far, Garrett Spawn, your leading scorer with four points, two field goals. And right now, the turnover margin is big as well because Old Ford's turned it over twice to one for Calvert. Dive real quickly here into the Facebook cheering section, and I see Madison Robson cheering for Garrett Spawn and Tiffin Calvert. Amanda Brubaker just throwing up a heart, so I guess you could translate that to whatever you want. Maybe it's a late Valentine's Day Ooh. heart. Never too late for a Valentine wish. I'll take one. Here's Nutter out on the perimeter. They give it up. Stockader swing it. That is definitely not Nutter's spot on the floor. He wants that thing within 15 feet. How about the job that Beaker's done on him so far defensively, holding his own inside? Boy, I'll tell you what, when you drive the lane, there are just Calvert Senecas coming from every direction on you defensively, and it's amazing to watch this team. They really lock you down defensively. Nutter maybe got away with a little bit of a push off inside. Now he turns around, baseline, much needed bucket for Old Fort. Yep, that one kind of stopped the bleeding momentarily. Now we'll see if they can settle in and get a stop on the defensive end. Spawn from the foul line, nothing but net. Yeah, he says, think again about stopping us. Uh, I'm just going to pull up and take that 13-footer all night if I'm open. 
And I do wonder about the coaching strategy to try to come out with the full court pressure here. You see how easy it's been for the Seneca minus that one giveaway that they had. Back into Nutter we go again. To a crowd, of course, triple team. So the three ball is going to be there. They just cannot seem to hit them. That's going to be Spawn, I believe, coming over the back. Yep. You watch him on the far side, comes right over the top. Easy call for the official. First foul on Garrett Spawn. Team foul number three against Calvert. Majors has got to start hitting some shots. He's missed a couple of three balls, and uh, they really need to cash in from the outside, and here they turn it over again. Thrown right into the hands of Ethan Sauber. Three turnovers now against Old Fort. Spawn puts the pass on the money to size love from the corner now. Back iron from Sauber. Nice rebound that time by Garrett Havens. Paul disrupting the outbreak there by the Stockaders. It's just impossible not to be impressed by the defense that is played by Tiffin Calvert. Yeah, this team moves its feet well. They're always in good position. They front, and they can play from behind on the post. Klaus made an excellent move to create some separation, missed the shot. Second chance points, not there either for Miller. Old Ford is starting to hit the uh, glass, but they're just not shooting the ball well at all. Nothing is falling. Two-man game here with Spawn, turns the corner. Scoop shot, off balance, wouldn't fall. Nutter collects it. Another three, pop from the corner. This time, it hits its mark. Well, one had to fall sooner or later. Simon Tackett with his first points of the night. We're inside of a minute now, 40 seconds. I think that this could be a pretty key possession defensively here for the Stockaders if you can get Calvert to try to shoot it early, miss it, and get a rebound. Doesn't seem to be the game plan, though. Nope. All you can hope for at this point is just to get a miss and stay down by six to end the quarter. Spawn to the corner. Ronsky chased out of there as we're down to 10. Paul. Wow. How about that soft touch? I think they're going to wave it off. Doesn't matter. We go to the end of one. Calvert after the soft roll by Paul. Leads by nine as we head to the second. Minutes gone by, healthy start here for Tiffin Calvert and their fans. Nine point advantage as we start the second quarter. They got the basketball too. I'm Brian Skronsky, got Lynn Passett with me. And really just the story of that first quarter, Old Fort got wide open, three balls. Just nothing fell for them, Lynn. Yeah, if they were hitting half their shots, this thing would be a one or two point ball game. But as it stands right now, they have outshot themselves from being in a close ball game. Nutter definitely affected that shot right there from Beaker. 
Old Fort doing a lot better job on the glass now. The rebounds are dead even at seven apiece. Just the shooting, it needs to start falling for Old Fort. And that is another inside miss. That's three inside the paint that Old Fort has missed. Back the other way, Beaker missed it and then poked away from Paul. Wow, what an effort there by Old Fort to get back defensively and hold the Senecas to nada. Yep, that was a big hand steal by uh, Old Fort. Can't cash in at the other end though, so it remains 16-7. Just over a buck gone by here in the second quarter. Neither team really shooting all that exceptionally well other than Spawn who has uh, knocked down three jumpers. Old Ford just desperately needs to get something to fall. Another paint shot that will not fall. Stockaders on the season too. They were pretty deadly from inside of the lane. Shot 55% I believe on the season. But so far in this contest, and do credit the Senecas with some of their pressure defense, bringing bodies inside. The Stockaders know to knock off state number one. Boy, do you got to convert on a lot of those opportunities. Well, and sometimes, even though you uh, played them close once, when you've already lost two times to a team, it kind of plays in your head that, well, they've gotten this twice. What are the odds? Well, so far, it's been my experience in this tournament 100%. <laughs> Every three matchup that I've seen so far, the team that won the first two has won the third. Nutter finally gets one to fall through. Excellent move. We've seen him do it a couple of times, but just didn't get the break to fall through the basket. This time it works out. He's got six of their nine. We talked about how he needs somebody to go with him. So far, nobody has gone with him. How about size love back the other way? Pushing the advantage right back up. Yeah, nice offhand move by size love. And Right back up to a 21-9 lead. Here in this lower corner, again, Old Fort wide there. They, I thought they were going to make a skip pass, and they didn't do it. And it leads to spawn, leak out all the way to the cup. So proficient in the open court. Spawn is four for four, and another timeout taken by the Stockaders. The bleeding just isn't stopping right now for Old Fort. Man, what a start to this game by Tiffin Calvert defensively. Garrett Spawn has been exceptional so far, and just look at the hands on the defense there. That's Paul who poked it away. And this guy's just like a bullet freight train in the open court. He can go with speed, intensity, and then also finishes really well both hands once he gets to the basket. Well, right now the story is the bad shooting for a poor shooting, we'll say, for Old Fort. They've also turned it over four times, and uh, Calvert's only turned it over once. Rebounding, they're hanging in there. It's eight to seven, and actually Old Fort has the eight, so they're doing a good job on the glass but they have got to start knocking down some shots, especially in the paint, because they're being intimidated right now by the defensive abilities of Tiff and Calvert, and they're just rushing their shots a little bit. They need to maybe give that head pump, get them in the air, and then go up strong. And there's a human hot dog on the sideline here in the Calvert student section with his face painted green. I don't know how you overcome that when if, that's right in your face all night. If his face is painted green, is that a moldy hot dog then, or what, what's the case there? We might have to get a halftime interview with that gentleman and find out what the entire whole outfit wardrobe is. But it's working so far. <laughs> Seneca's will let uh, Nutter have that ball all the way out of the three-point line with his back to the basket all night. But this is where he wants to do damage. He does a nice job of kicking it out. And now a shot finally falls for Adam Majors. Perfect offense that time by Old Fort. They got it to Nutter, drew a couple of defenders, the kick out, and this time the shot was on cue. 
Both teams have two three-pointers so far. Paul's been able to knock down both so far, I believe, for the Senecas. Garrett Spawn, he's feeling it. Kicks it outside in an air ball. That should have been over the back there on Blake Ronsky, and they finally do make the call. Another look. This definitely, that shot looked like a draft came through. Just came weird out of the hands. And Three and a half minutes left. This is a big possession now for the Stockaders. They really need to score here. And they turn it over. Exact opposite of what Dr. Lim was ordering up for Casey Klaus. Yeah, just Klaus just out of control. He's got to keep his composure. Know what you're going to do with the basketball. He was a little indecisive and going way too quickly. And here's a young man who knows what he wants to do with the basketball, but there he turned it over. Yeah, it looked like he got tipped just off target there for Nolan Beaker. Now they'll establish Nutter. About 12 feet away, he's going to back in on the block. Triple team, doesn't matter, still puts it up. And a big follow for Nutter. Colin Nutter, he averages 22 a ball game. He's got eight of the team's 14, and it's down to a nine-point Calvert advantage. Very slowly but surely, the Stock Aiders are chipping away here. Just got to keep getting it done at the defensive end if you want to get back in it for Old Fort. And now it's kind of a big trip down the floor for Calvert. Well defended. Forced a really wild shot that time from Ronsky. Boy, a three-pointer here, and Calvert may have to take a timeout. Any kind of a bucket here, and Calvert may want to take a timeout. Old Fort being very patient now. Two minutes to play first half. They did well to get another of the ball on the block, and wow, bells them out right there. That's just high level stuff. First player in double figures, Colin Nutter with 10. The lead is down to seven. Tipped ball, Stock Aiders got it. It's Majors creating the break, Euro step. Wow, if that would have fallen, the other side of the uh, arena would have gone bonkers. Here it is on the burson Bakey replay. Majors, Majors creating some offense from some excellent defense. And now all of a sudden, that slow little drip. Old Fort getting closer to getting back to even here. Well, they've just been kind of scratching and clawing, slowly crawling their way back into this thing. 21-19, just... Uh, or I'm sorry, 21 to nine a few minutes ago. So they have outscored them eight to two. Majors though saves it inbounds to spawn. He's got a one on four. I bet he's still gonna go and. A little out of control that time. Yeah, that would have been a tough finish. Four defenders right around him. Nutter needs somebody to step up. Here's a big three. Just a bit too much for Majors, but look at the hustle, the effort to keep the possession alive. And a foul on the floor. Not sure how anybody can dispute that foul call. They were all over his arms. Just watch right here as he spins right there. Uh, Max Paul reaching in and had nothing but arm. And that's who got the foul. Majors continues to be aggressive. Just doesn't have the shooting flow. But the Senecas keeping the window open here for a big drastic comeback as the live, well, or the, the run stays alive here. They're kind of playing out of control right now. They need to just calm things down and not be in such a hurry. I know they want to try and beat 
Stock Aiders down the floor, but right now those uh, breaks are not there. Just be satisfied to control the basketball. We're inside of a minute. So if Old Four can get a score here, it's huge. Momentum going into halftime and cutting the score down to either four or maybe even three. Majors in full-on attack mode, called for the travel. That's a good call. He had nowhere to go on the baseline. Old Ford's been getting themselves caught under the basket and along the baseline several times tonight. Sometimes you got to just hold your dribbles and reverse yourself back out and reset. So they could have had the score down to three or four. Now it could even go the other way. It could go up to nine for Calvert with a three here or maybe eight. Spawn picked up here at midcourt by Klaus. They should start to run the offense. We're at uh, 12, usually about 10. They'll start to put things into action. They want to get it there to spawn. Step back triple. Offline, out of bounds. Going to stay down here. 2.7 seconds. So Calvert with plenty of time to at least get a look and a shot up. And Coach John Otterbacher says, I'm going to get a little more height than here, so maybe they're going to try and... Uh, Lob it up top. Let's see if they have something in, in store here. Instead, they'll come outside. Size love dialed it up in and out. And we have got two in the books, folks. Fun game, too. It was all Seneca's early, but the Stock Caters made it a game with a big run to close out the second. Stick around for the Frito-Lay halftime. That'll include some stats, analysis. We'll give you some scores from around the area and get you all set for quarter number three. You're watching live and free Tournament Hoops exclusively on the OH Report. Report founder Brian Skorowski and you've just enjoyed first half action live and free exclusively right here on the OH Report but stick around still plenty more to come right here as our boys high school basketball returns after this. Justin Moore, you look like I need a drink right now. Crowder, God Almighty, I hope you'll find Rodney Atkins, makes me wanna take a back road. Austin French, makes and more. Friday and Saturday, July 1st and 2nd, Morrow County Fairgrounds in Mount Gilead, Ohio. For tickets and more info, visit freedomfestohio.com. Cheddar and sour cream. Flaming hot. Cheddar and sour cream. Flaming hot. Flamin hot. Cheddar, cheddar and sour cream. Genius. Introducing Ruffles Flaming Hot Cheddar and Sour Cream. Own your ridges.
Welcome into the OH Report Halftime Show presented by Frito-Lay. Two quarters in the books. Fun back and forth game, Calvert. Looked like they were totally going to seize control of this thing early on in the second quarter. Give a lot of credit, I think, Lynn, to Old Fort. Battling back, making a case here as they're within striking distance down just six. Yeah, they, uh, they were kind of uh, teetering on flatlining in that second quarter. Sure. But uh, turnovers. And then their shooting started to come alive a little bit. Their, their big problem right now is that Cullen Nutter has 10, Majors has four, and Tackett has three, and that's it. Only three players have scored, where all five of the starting five have scored for Calvert. So this is where we talked in the pregame. Uh, Nutter has to have some help, and right now he's not getting it. He's got 10 of the team's 17 points, and they're double teaming him, they're triple teaming him, all they have to do is start knocking down some threes, and they're not going to be able to continue doing that because they'll have to go out and start defending the perimeter. But as long as they're not knocking down the shots, they're going to continue to make life miserable for Colin Nutter. Just a couple of made threes for the Stockhater. Same case for Calvert, though they haven't attempted nearly as many trifectas as their opponent here tonight. Go ahead, break down some of the numbers. How have we gotten to this point? What are some big statistics that you think have led to the 23-17 differential? Well, for Calvert, they had four turnovers, and they sat on one for about a quarter and a half. And then the last part of that second quarter, they really started to kind of get out of, out of sorts. They were out of sync. They were out of control. They were trying to play too fast and forced the break when it wasn't there. So those turnovers allowed Old Ford to stay in the basketball game. Rebounding. Uh, pretty much even, 11 to 9. And uh, the leading scorer here at halftime, as we said, was Nutter with 10. Leading the way for Calvert is Garrett Spawn with 8 and 7 for Max Paul. Uh, I thought Garrett Spawn really could have taken more shots than he did because he's trying to distribute and not, not be taking all the shots. But right now, he's hot. I think he's only missed one field goal. So they really need him to just step up, and I think he'll do that like he did against Kerry. I think he'll step up and start taking the rock and go into the hole and looking for open shots. When he's aggressive and cooking, they're a much better team. I think they need number one and like number one to go ahead, assert himself, try to take some tough contested shots if he has to, drive it into the lane. Excellent finishing when he gets to the basket lane. And you know, you can put some fouls potentially on Colin Nutter. I think he's just got one so far in this game. If you can get that big body out of the middle. And that one was kind of disputable because I felt like he he went straight up and did what he needed to do as a defender, and he clearly made the block clean. I kind of felt like he unjustifiably got whistled for that foul. Uh, fouls are going to maybe become an issue because Calvert had six in the first half where the Stock Aiders only had three, and the biggest reason that uh, Calvert had six, they're coming when they're double-teaming Nutter down low. Senecas are out of the locker rooms. Getting warmed up now. We'll take one more quick timeout. We'll be back with your third quarter action live and free. Exclusively right here on the OH Report.
Back here at Liberty Benton High School Division IV District Championship on the line between a pair of conference rivals tonight. Old Fort and Calvert battling it out. 16 minutes in the books. It's a six point game, 23-17. Tiffin Calvert on top. My name is Brian, Lynn Passett is with me here tonight. And a couple of other scores on our OH Report family and network going down right now. At the half in the Division II Regional Championship between Bishop Hartley and Shelby, Lady Whippets trail 10 to seven. So another undefeated team ranked number one in the state on display tonight and right now seven points in two quarters that's fascinating yeah that's uh, definitely not the Shelby team that we have seen all season long so speaking of defense we've talked about Calvert's defense Bishop Hartley must have uh, a little something going defensively too and in another game of interest in Division Four, another district championship Margareta who's the number one seed there they lead South Central the three seed 33-27 that game at the half well, here Old Fort has the basketball to start the second half, and we've talked about big possessions. This is one. Trying to get some momentum fresh out the blocks instead. Bit of a wild shot from Miller, and it's boarded by Spawn. Paul the other way. Couldn't have gone much more miserably for Old Fort there. Yeah, and, and as always, Garrett Spawn has his head up, and he's looking down court, and he made a beautiful pass, and he got the assist. Here are the shots they need to be making, and they just aren't making them. Yeah, Major's got a clean look. They've had some excellent head fakes on the perimeter to lift Calvert, get them out of the way in terms of their defensive positioning, but just can't cap them off. Nutter that time thinking he kind of got pushed in the back as he went up for that basketball. He's like, that's why the ball went off my knee. I kind of got pushed forward, but the official said, I didn't see it. Excellent play that Ooh, time by Myers dribble. Miller. Take a look at that again. Yep, yep. He, he gathered it and took off again. Bond trying to get his team set up in the proper positioning here. Now he'll come back up top to get the basketball. Calvert's got him spread out. Let's see if they just let Garrett go to work. They're going to be content to take their time. They kind of got out of control and too fast paced at times in that second quarter. And I think Coach Otterbacher said, guys, we just got to play under control here. Run our offense get open shots, we're knocking them down, we'll be all right. A lot of time coming off the clock here for Calvert. Yeah, we've played uh, two minutes in the second half and Old Fort finds themselves playing a lot of defense. Size Love sneaks the pass around to Beaker, who gets called for the travel. Look like the right call. Yeah, six turnovers now against Calvert, seven against the Stockaders. So that part of the ball game has evened itself up after uh, Calvert had only one through one quarter of play. But where is the offense going to come from for Old Fort if they're truly going to try to get back into this game? Right now the passing is not very crisp and there you can see another double team by Calvert. They are just really putting the pressure on you defensively. Doesn't matter where the ball is. It can be all the way out to the timeline and they're pressuring you. That's what's gotten them to this point. Still undefeated in the district championship round. Miller from the foul line, squares up, looking to attack Paul. Boy, they just can't get buckets tonight. Shooting has just not been in their favor. As we mentioned, only three Stockaders are in the scorebook. That's a charge. 
Good call by Kevin Catafias. So Beaker trucks through to the fender to pick up his first personal foul of the evening. Oh, wow, what a play right there. Ethan Sauber somehow, some way, snuck in there to steal this basketball. Check this out, folks. And then not only that, he got Sauber to reach in and commit the foul. The pressure just doesn't stop. It's relentless, and that's where they hang their hat. They have learned that, boy, if we can do it on the defensive end, and there's Sauber getting his second straight foul. And, ooh, I mean, obviously that's a really tough one right there to swallow if you're Casey Klaus. Looked like he got at least some ball there on the reach in. That's a rarity right there. Garrett Spawn missing a free throw on the season. Uh, he is 74% at the line. He will convert the second though. And it's back up to a nine point lead and Old Fort works so hard to get it down to six at one point. And there's a steal by Spawn. He led the SBC and steals it nearly for a ball game. He's got some of the fastest fingers I have seen. Paul on the attack baseline, pushing the advantage back up to double figures. Old Fort may want to talk it over. That will be the case. So timeout taken on the floor. Just the 30 second timeout. But man, well, the Tiffin other, Calvert. Whew. Yeah, the other night against Carey, we saw immediately what the adjustment was by Coach Otterbacher. It was start pressuring the ball even more than we did in the first half, especially in the backcourt, and drive the basketball, especially Garrett Spawn. Tonight, the pressure has intensified again here in the second half, and you can tell he has told them, slow down. You don't have to be in a hurry. We've got the lead. You guys are out of control at times, and we're not seeing those breaks where they're out of control here in the second half. Tonight's district basketball broadcast brought to you live and free on the OH Report. Thanks to our generous sponsors, Old Fort Banking Company, because your home is your fortress. They have mortgages made for you. Burst and Bakey's Insurance. Get a free online quote for all your insurance needs at Burst and Bakey's website. Link included in the description. Jessica Gosman, real estate agent, meeting all your home buying and selling needs every step of the way. HDER Link, providing reliable, affordable, friendly internet services to residential and business customers. And Frito Lay, good fun. Well, another missed shot by Old Fort, and Calvert now with another chance to balloon this lead into dangerous territory because right now it stands at 11 and another three here would really put the dagger on him. And for your key to victory to try to get up over that 50 mark, Stockaders ain't going to get there. No, nope. especially when only uh, three guys are in the scorebook. And I see the Calvert assistant coaches telling their guards, just go ahead and back it out. No need to attack. But if you're going to get some points, why not? Nice follow there by Ronsky. Yeah, Ronsky, right place, right time. And now it's a 13-point lead. That's as big as Old Fort has trailed by tonight. They just aren't getting open looks here in the third quarter like they were in the first two quarters. And this Calvert team, from what I've seen them, they seem like one of those championship fighters that they need a couple of rounds to really warm up. Defensively, they're at their best, I think, in the second half. They definitely go to a whole different gear. Nice offensive rebound that time. Now Nutter turns. Hand in his face, didn't matter. Still able to cash it in. He's got 12 of the team's 19. We mentioned in the pregame he needs somebody to tag along with him and carry this team alongside of him, and he's just not getting that help. 
Bronski tried to squeeze it into Beaker. Not a wise play. Here's Nutter on the leak out. Look out. Two-handed flush. Student section going flat out wild. Old Ford has been a team of little mini runs tonight. Earlier when they were down by 12, they made a run to get it to six. Now they were down 13 and have made a run to get it back down to nine. Take one more look at that excellent pass ahead by Klaus. And then Nutter showing off the athleticism. Flying for the two-handed slamma jamma. And he's still unsigned at the college level, Lynn. You said he's got a few teams looking at him, though. Yeah, he just hasn't made up his mind, and he's taking his time, which is fine. You know, take your time, know where you want to go. I believe a uh, warning was just given to Old Fort. Their crowd didn't like that, but I believe a bench warning was given to the coach. That was Spawn getting to the rack, and it just looks effortless the way that he's able to penetrate, finish when he gets at the rim. He averages 21 a ball game. He's got 11 tonight. Stockaders swing it. They got Nutter down on the block. And he's going to get fouled on the floor. Take a look back at the other end. Garrett Spawn just goes right through, slicing through a defense. Ronsky gets the whistle on that foul call on the baseline. Minute and a half left here in the third quarter, so time is really becoming a key here for both teams, especially Old Fort. Let's see if Nutter can try to will his team back into the ball game, or will somebody else step up and start hitting some shots? It has not happened yet tonight. I'd almost rather see Nutter working from the high post than the low post right now because when he gets that ball down low, it's an automatic double team. We got a kick. Kicked ball against Calvert. There's a look on the Burson Bakey Boy, replay. I did not see a kicked ball anywhere in there. I have no idea where that came from, even watching the replay. I'm not sure where that phantom call came from. That ball was never, ever kicked. Not sure what uh, the holdup here is. Well, coach just wanted an explanation. I'm not sure how you give him one on that play. Size love, creating the thefts. Spawn, the veteran, takes a timeout, preserves the possession. That's that senior leadership again. You know, if you're a sophomore, maybe even a junior, you might not think about the fact that I can just call a timeout and this is kind of a big possession, but the senior spawn says, hey, we just made a nice defensive play. This is a big trip down the floor. We're up by 11. If we can cash in here, it could be the knockout punch. Let's see what's going on in the comment section on YouTube real quick. I see Don, not sure who he's intending this for, but he says, let's go. Tyler takes it one step further. How about let's go Calvert? And then TJ Hernandez, Spawn is yummy with it. I think I would agree with that. <laughs> Guy's got some pretty tasty moves on the floor. He does. He has a cherry to put on top of it all with the whipped cream. And we do love hearing from you, the fans, in our comments section on Facebook and YouTube. So drop us some lines, let us know. Your impressions of tonight's contest. What's going to win it down the stretch here in the fourth quarter? Your favorite players, all that. Drop us a line. We'll read it. Final minute of the third quarter. And I would not be a bit surprised. Now, he can't come in. They cannot substitute. Yep, good job by the officials. He's got to be there at the first horn, not after the second. But I would not be a bit surprised to see Calvert say, let's hold the ball for the last shot here. I know it's a minute to take off the clock, but they've got the ball handlers to do it. Unless they get a wide open layup or backdoor cut, I think they're just going to kind of milk this clock. Palm gets the switch with Miller on him. This might be a good matchup to go ahead and burn a little bit of time. 
a point guard with a forward on him. And neither team is in foul trouble, so you can take some gambles right now on defense and go for the steal, and if you don't get it, no big deal. That's a five-second call. Oh, a timeout was taken first. Boy, he was getting very flirtatious <laughs> with the five-second call. Yeah, I hear you. Yeah, this is just the last couple of seconds, but I think, well, you see he the official did it. put up the five seconds. That's why I thought he was going to call it, but apparently he had a timeout first. Kevin Sand was definitely up three, six, to make the call. Three, one, three, five, three, six, three. Well, this being a district championship, the winner moves on to the regionals. A lot of miles going to be logged on some fans' cars here in the next couple of weeks if things continue to go well for the winner of this one. I think that's a part of the beauty of tournament time, too, getting to new venues, new locations that you've never been, playing in foreign lands, if you will, Lynn, against teams that you're not familiar with, you've never seen, never heard of on your schedule before. Once you get to the regional round, that's when things really start opening up and become a, a lot more fun, I think. Yep. Sometimes you kind of get a uh, mistaken sense of your identity for who you think you are, and then you get to the regionals and you find out there are other teams out there just as good as you. Foul's going to go on the floor against Miles Miller. His second team foul, number four. And we're down to 13 seconds, so Calvert has wasted this clock down for the last shot. Step back three. And comes up short for Ronsky. Heave at the horn. Actually pretty close, but it's off target. And Calvert with a double-digit lead, just eight minutes away from making their way to the regionals. Join you here at Liberty Benton for money time. That's right. Who is going to cash their check to move on to the round of regionals right now? Looks like it's going to be the Senecas. They've got a double-digit cushion. 32-21 is their lead over Old Fort, looking to knock off their conference foes for the third time this season. They outscored the Stockaders 10-4 in that third quarter. And again, when you're only scoring four points, that's just not going to buy you too many wins. And they're just not getting anything done on the offensive end are the old Ford Stock Haters. Meanwhile, here's Spawn splitting his way in between a couple of defenders and all the way to the rack. Kind of lulls you to sleep. He just kind of dribbles around, acts like he's not really interested in going anywhere, and then he just kind of kicks it into high gear and he's by you before you know it. 13 points now for Spawn. Miller short arm that shot. Yeah, Miller was kind of the one I had my eye on before this game started as being the one that might be there to give some help to Nutter, but it's just not been there. Miller has yet to score. Sitting on a big goose egg. Matter of fact, three players on the floor right now for Old Fort have yet to score as Nutter deflects that one. And Miller, one man break, taken away by Size Love last second.
quick score update for you guys in the Division II Mansfield Regional for the ladies. Number one, Shelby trailing right now, 21-16 to open up the fourth. And in Division IV District Championship between Margareta and South Central, it's the Polar Bears with an eight-point cushion, 49-41, six minutes to go in that one. Foul's going to be committed on the floor. We saw uh, Jackson Sizelove take not really a, more of a forearm to the chin than it was an elbow, but he got up looking at the official like, hey, didn't you see that? But it really was not anything intentional. It was just kind of an accidental thing, but he took a good blow to the chin. Look at Spawn just relentless. They do get him for the foul, his second. But boy, he is just in the hip pocket again of his defender. What is it in the movie uh, Hoosiers? He says, I want to know what flavor gummy's chewing. <laughs> yeah. Well, he found out right there again. He has one of the swiftest moves on defense I have seen coming through. When he decides to go for the basketball, he almost always gets a piece. Yep, he, uh, he is quick with the hands, quick like a cat. As we talked about in the pregame, he averages nearly, it's 3.7, so basically four steals a ball game, and I think he's gotten that tonight. Old Fort checks Simon Tackett into the game. Klaus picking up his third personal foul. He's the first in the game to reach three personals. Thirteen point lead. This is a big trip for the Stockaders defensively. They can't give up any more points than they do. And yet again, you just see the poise in the paint off the drive from Spawn. Bullies his way in and then just takes his time. Never seems to be rushed. Almost like a repeat of the carry game where he only had five at halftime and then the second half he just turned it up a gear and he's doing it again tonight. He's got 15 silently. That's going to be a foul against Nolan Beaker. Fouls on number 22, Nolan Beaker, his second team spin. Both teams with five team fouls now. Clock is stopped, and it's a 15-point Seneca's lead. And, and they just got ball. a jump ball on Colin Nutter. Tied up there with Beaker. Well, Old Fort wanted to hit 50. I don't think that's going to happen. I don't think they're getting to 30 tonight. And just look at the aggressive energy on display from everybody. And Beaker was the guy who flew into the bench, able to come away with that ball. Look, check this out, Lynn. So he's over here in the chairs. He's going to get up, make the sprint baseline to make this play happen. Yep. That is all out hustle right there. Being at the right place, he kind of read how that ball was going to come off the rim. Great job of defense. And Calvert now is really going to start working this clock. They're going to just take their time. If they have a wide open shot, they'll take it, but they're not going to force anything. There's your wide open shot. Yeah, excellent ball movement. It. But you see, Nutter just affects everything inside with his length. But with the offensive rebound, gives Spawn and company an opportunity here to leak a few more seconds off the clock. Huh, that was an interesting <laughs> play. It? I think that was probably a travel or a double dribble, whatever you want to call it there, but they didn't make anything of a call. Eight turnovers now against Calvert. Old Ford has turned it over 11 times tonight. Rebounds are six apiece here in the second half.
Neither team has really gotten to the line either. Max Paul cracked the crouton out of midair there. This Calvert uh, faithful crowd is starting to feel it now. They know that we're up by 15 and we have the basketball and time has hit four minutes. Wow. That's all I have to say about that one. Yeah, that was a Sports Center special right there. Spawn. Garrett, Garrett Spawn. I might send this to ESPN. Folks. Look at the fake to the corner, hanging, switching hands in midair to the left. That's a right-handed player on the opposite side. Just nasty. Doesn't get much sweeter than that. And Coach Otterbacher says, I just want a timeout to kind of get my troops together and make sure we're all on the same page. Tonight's district broadcast brought to you live and free on the OH Report. Thanks to our amazing sponsors. Big shout out to Freedom Festival Ohio. You can buy tickets online. Just follow the link in the game description and you can see country music's hottest stars right here in the state of Ohio in July. Frito Lay, good fun. HDER Link, providing reliable, affordable, friendly internet service to residential and business customers. Jessica Gosman, real estate agent. Meeting all your home buying and selling needs every step of the way. Burson Bakey's Insurance. Get a free online quote for all your insurance needs at the Burson Bakey's website. The link included in the description. Old Fort Banking Company. Because your home is your fortress, they have mortgages made just for you. Never a good sign when you see fans starting to leave. And the Old Fort fans have started to leave. They realize this one's over. They're down by 17 points, and uh, it, it almost feels like Calvert can do anything they want to do right now. And the exact opposite at the offensive end right now for the Stockaders. Shots just haven't dropped really at any point in this game. They had the one nice stretch in the second quarter. Outside of that, I think it was like a 7-2 to run. It's really just been the Senecas having their way. They've scored four points the entire second half. Oh. <laughs> That's how ugly it is cool. offensively for the Stock Gators. Meanwhile, Spawn getting to the rack whenever he wants. Cook him with the salt at will. He is just having his way right now. There's a foul against uh, the Seneca's Nick Palm. That'll be his second. Well, game two was won by... Uh, Calvert by 19, and they lead by 19 right now. This one, unfortunately, for the Stock Aider fans, has gone identical to that first or second matchup. Adam Majors is going to check back in. Miller is going to sit down maybe for the final time this season. I can't remember the last time I have watched a high school basketball game where a team has scored five points in the second half. And this is a, a good offensive team. Second best offense in the uh, Sandusky Bay Conference River Division. Turnover against Calvert, that's their ninth of the night. That's probably the one thing that uh, Coach Otterbacher would like to make some changes on because uh, nine turnovers is uh, not where you want to be. Nearly one there for the Stockaders. Beaker still trying to keep that going. Just look at the tenacity on defense, though, by Tiffin Calvert. I mean, no matter where that ball is, someone is in your face. Klaus misfires, tipped out of bounds. It'll stay down here at this end. And you're absolutely right. That's why Calvert's in this position, because that relentless effort and energy, it just seemingly gets higher and higher as the game goes on. Yep. And that's a sign of a good team. I mean, they're not going to rest. They're not going to uh, take any time off. Every possession they play as hard as they can on defense. Obviously a well-conditioned team. 
as Klaus well off target. Nutter somehow made a catch in between two players, fouled on the floor. Take one more look here on the replay. And getting Beaker, and that's his fourth. That's just go, go, gadget arms. But it's way too little too late for Nutter and Old Fort. He's played well, 14 points. Definitely uh, well below his season average. I mean, the entire point total for the team is his season average. But just running into a little bit of a different beast here. When they played Calvert the first go around, that was just the second game of the year before they knew what they had. And talking to some of their assistant coaches during their last regular season game, they admitted that they, they thought they were going to be a good team and perhaps be in this position. But state number one, just rocking and rolling? Nah, they, they, they didn't picture this, Lynn. They developed into this. Absolutely. Oh, excellent move. Finally, Klaus got someone on his heels and was able to get to the hoop. His first points of the night. Unreal. And still only four players have scored for Old Fort. I mean, it's a good thing Colin Nutter showed up because he's got 16 of their 26 right now. You cannot be a one-man team. Unless it is Michael Jordan or LeBron James as that one man. Then maybe you can. But. Kind of felt like Old Fort tonight would have needed one of those guys in their prime to get a victory over this Calvert team as well as they have been defending. Two for two for Ronsky. He's got seven points on the night. Spawn once again reaching in there and stripping the basketball. I mean, we've seen that probably 10 times tonight. Off the ball, just sticking his hand out, perfectly timed, and getting at least a piece. And he is going to Heidelberg. Is that what I remember correctly? Correct. He'll do well there. That's, uh, that's a good level of play for him. The OAC is a good conference. Beaker just fouled out, gets a standing ovation from the Calvert faithful here. Well, he only scored four points, but he got a ton of rebounds and really played solid defense all night tonight. That's what they needed him to do tonight. That was his role, was to try to take on Colin Nutter. And I would say he was more than up for the challenge. Closing in on the final two minutes here. Calvert going to cut down the nets, move on to regionals. Another outstanding performance by them. None of their games in the tournament so far have been close. Majors will get the personal foul, and Spawn will go to the free throw line looking for his 20th point of the night. He only had eight at halftime. He only had five at halftime against Carey. So second half this week, he has really bolstered himself into a new level. There's point number 20. He averages 17 a ball game. He had 21 against Carey, and he can match that right here. And he does. 20-point margin now. Size love called for the reach-in. Well, Calvert will keep it rolling. They'll move to 25 and 0. Klaus with just two points on the night. And an empty trip on the free throw line. But then Nutter with a putback and a foul. He's got a shot at a three-point play. 
And he's got 18 right now. Nice aggressive move to pull that rebound down in traffic. The ability and strength to finish. Just couldn't get any help. Two out of seven this half are the Stock Aiders at the free throw line. Palm will now step up to the free throw line. He'll look for his first points of the night. Just 95 seconds remaining. Calmly knocks down the first. Six out of seven this half are the Senecas at the free throw line. So big difference between the two teams. And now seven out of eight, and that makes them nine out of 11 on the night tonight at the charity strike. And that was just free throws number 11 and 12 on the season for Nick Palm. Nutter might as well just uh, take it himself because he's all they've got right now and he's all they've had all night. He's got 20. Looks like Coach Otterbacher is going to empty out the bench. Both teams are going to do the same. If we get a uh, foul call or some kind of a violation, they may even take a timeout just to get these guys in at some point. Beaker up off the bench, getting the crowd fired up. And I think we're going to get a foul here just so that those reserves can come into the ball game and get a taste of district championship action. So a classy move there by Klaus to commit the personal. Spano stay in the game to shoot the free throws. Well, a great effort by Colin Nutter. He'll finish with 20 points tonight. But he, uh, as we said, got no help. Three points for Tackett, four points for Majors, and that's it. And two for Klaus, I'm sorry. Wow. So there wow. just wasn't any help out there. Oh, a miss by Spawn. Don't see that very often. So the backups all checking in to the mix for Calvert as Hugs handed out over on the sideline. Moving on to regionals. Spawn missed them both. That's an oddity. Blake Bender sporting the mullet there for uh, Old Ford. I've seen the mullet return this year. Oh, it is back in full force, Lynn. The kids loving that look. Seems like everything retro seems to come back around eventually. And right now, I'd say over about the last three, four years, the mullet has made its return. That'll be the last exit of the night for Garrett Spahn, 21 points. He's got to be our HDER League player of the game tonight and will join us for a post-game interview after the Senecas cut down the nets. They'll get to do so in about five seconds from now. Moving on, the Senecas of Tiffin Calvert, 48 to 30. Monster second half performance by Spawn and all the way around defensively for the Senecas as they are district champions yet again. The blowout win here of Old Fort. And for me, the trend continues where it's not that hard to beat your opponent for the third time in the season. <laughs> it's been happening a whole bunch here in the state of Ohio during the 2022 tournament. We're gonna take a quick time out. We will be back for the trophy presentations, net cutting celebrations, final stats, and get an interview. Garrett Spawn and maybe a couple others. Keep it with us, the Frito-Lay post-game show. We'll be back right after this.
Century, Justin Moore. You look like I need a drink right now. Crowder. God Almighty, I hope you'll find me. Rodney Atkins. Makes me want to take a back road. Austin French Makes and more. Friday and Saturday, July 1st and 2nd, Morrow County Fairgrounds in Mount Gilead, Ohio. For tickets and more info, visit freedomfestohio.com. Flaming hot, cheddar and sour cream. Flaming hot, cheddar and sour cream. Flaming hot, hot, cheddar and sour cream. Genius. Introducing Ruffles, flaming hot cheddar and sour cream. Own your ridges. Show on the OH Report, powered by Frito Lay. Huge performance tonight by Tiffin Calvert. Old Fort just not up for the challenge tonight, as they will finish as district runner-up and receiving right now their medals and trophy. Just a tough performance offensively for them. No one really has shined this year against Tiffin Calvert, though, as we talked about during the broadcast. Everybody's been held to 50 points or less against them all season, and tonight, 30. No different. Same old story. <laughs> uh, different night, same result. Good defense by the Senecas. Uh, I have no idea what the shooting percentage was for Old Fort, but I was telling you while we were off on break there, I'll bet it was less than 30% tonight, easy. 
Uh, shots were just not falling. Only four players in the entire scorebook. And if you take away the 20 points from Colin Nutter, another 10 combined points for the rest of the team. Wow. Uh, that's just not going to cut it in a district championship game. Yeah, I feel like that's about the lowest total that I've heard of this season in a game that I have personally covered at the boys' level where the collective rest of the team outside of one player is just 10 points. And it just from the very tip-off, Lynn, they were getting clean looks. Offensively, they were moving the ball well, and they weren't able to bury them. When you're playing against a team like Tiffin Calvert, those are the shots that you have to make. There's just no question that if those were to fall, could have had a different story. Instead, it was Calvert basically taking advantage, running away with the lead at the beginning, and then in the second half, they stifled them defensively. Yeah, I don't know how many wide open threes Old Ford had, but they only made two all night. And those were in the first half. Never got another one the rest of the night. So it was just a tough scoring night for Old Fort. Uh, second half scoring, Calvert outscored the Senecas 26 to 13. They doubled them up, and they only gave up four points the entire third quarter. So that was huge. Seneca is getting their uh, district championship medallions right now, and then they will get the team trophy here in just a second. And this senior class really just has developed throughout the course of the season, become a special group, an awesome bond, and just the energy and effort that they play with, it really has been unmatched. When I got the opportunity to watch them in the Battle of Unbeatens in their final regular season game, Western Reserve was a team that we covered throughout the year. They got to 21-0 on the year by just being overly aggressive on defense. Very similar homogenous styles. Calvert's just a little bit better. They're, they're an elite group. They are, and you know, really it's not a, a huge difference. We said Old Fort had 20 from Colin Nutter and only 10 points from the rest. Well, tonight for Calvert, Garrett Spawn had 21, and the rest of the team only had 17. But at 17 is seven points more than Old Fort. So that was kind of the difference of this ball game. They at least put six guys in the scoring column and limited their turnovers, shot the ball much better, and uh, that was the difference in the ball game. Turnovers were big as well for Old Fort. They just really uh, couldn't afford the 11 that they had tonight. Smith getting the medal hung around his neck. Now Coach Otterbacher this season getting the team back to the promised land. Well, you know what? He's been there a while, and he deserves it. Calvert moves to 25 and 0. Old Ford finishes with a very respectable 19 and 5 record. Three of those losses, of course, to this team. All coming to these guys right here who hoist up the district championship trophy. What a feeling that must be. Yeah, when you only lose five games all season and three of them come to the number one team in the uh, state, you can't feel too awful bad. You're absolutely right. I, I just did a district championship game last week on the girls' side where three out of the four defeats all came to the same team, who was also state number one and undefeated, though those Shelby Whippets just about to lose right now. Their season's going to be done in the regional championship. But for this Calvert team, there's no reason to believe with the size that they have at the Division IV level, the playmaker that they have at their display with Spawn, they have everything that you need, all the ingredients to be a championship level contender. We talked about you know, there's levels to everything, and once you get out to the regional, I don't know that there's going to be too many other teams that can at least match them in terms of their intensity, Lynn, and with that great size and playmaking ability, I think this team is a true threat that can make a run to date. That's the only thing that may derail this team is if they can run into another team that can play defense as well as they do and can shut down Garrett Spawn because he's the straw that stirs the drink. If you can shut him down offensively, shut him down uh, from – passing and getting his assists. He's the one that really makes this train and this locomotive go. Uh, but they do have a lot of guys that can score on this team. So if he's not really 
doing it. They rely on Bronski. They rely on Beaker. They rely on a size love. Anybody there can score the basketball. So this is a, a very well-balanced basketball team. I like their chances at the regional. That's exactly what they're going to be doing is moving on to the next round. Sweet 16 for Tiffin Calvert. Lining up now for a group photo. 48-30, they take care of Old Four tonight. Tomorrow on the OH Report, we'll get an opportunity to see two more teams punch their ticket into the regionals for the boys' level. What a matchup we have with state number one, Colonel Crawford in Division Three, going against the Western Reserve team that I mentioned, Tiffin Calvert beat their only loss of the season so far. The Sheldon Bowl is what we're calling it. Chris Sheldon, the coach of the Rough Riders. Dave Sheldon, the longtime coach of Colonel Crawford. That's going to be awesome. I can't wait to call that one later. And Dad is probably going to be watching from down in South Carolina, so he'll be on the OH report tomorrow night, I'm sure, watching uh, his two sons go at it, unless he makes a, a special emergency trip drive up to Ohio just to kind of watch that one. But, uh, boy, what a proud dad he has to be. I mean, he was an outstanding, amazing coach in his own right, and now he's got two young sons who are both following in his footsteps and both have just had terrific careers coaching at their alma at their uh, respective schools and longevity just like their dad they have stayed yeah. at the same place they're not the kind of guys that boot, move around and look for the next opportunity sure they've built their programs and now they're reaping the rewards of it yeah chris sheldon i think's been at western reserve for 20 years now colonel crawford's coach david been there for at least 12 that i can remember and in Division Two, we're also going to see number one Huron, a great Tigers team, go against Lexington. Those both going to be live and free for you at 7 and 8 p.m. tomorrow night. A pair of district championship games, and then we'll also have a regional game from the ladies' side for the championship. Buckeye Central playing down in Division Four, and the Lady Buckets so far throughout their tournament run have been the most dominant team in Division Four. They are just smacking everyone, running clocks. Yeah, you talk about how well Calvert plays defense. Buckeye Central girls on offense are Ooh. just unreal. Yeah, they're, they're a phenomenal team to watch. No question about it. And to, to think that they played half a season or more without their leading score. Yeah, three-time All-Ohio and Claudia Pfeiffer not even available to them, and they still have won all their games except for one, losing to Shelby, team who's undefeated number one in D2. All right, here's the final stats of the night, presented by Frito-Lay, where it's always good fun. Uh, free throw shooting was great. Spawn missed the last two of the game. If not, I mean, they were basically perfect. And then, I mean, the Senecas just, they kind of overwhelmed them in every statistical category with the exception of rebounds with, with Nutter doing a pretty decent job inside of at least neutralizing that aspect of the game. But if I knew nothing about this game and I looked at those stats, I would say hey, this game was probably pretty close, but the difference was Old Fort could not knock down shots. I mean, uh, they probably shot 25% tonight, and uh, that's just not gonna win you ball games. So that is the tale of the tape. We are going to take one final timeout. When we return, we'll have Garrett Spahn with us. He'll break down this district championship, how they got here, and what it means now moving forward for him and his squad. Keep it here. That's just on the other side. Visit FreedomFestOhio.com.
Flamin' hot, cheddar and sour cream. Flamin' hot, cheddar and sour cream. Flamin' hot, hot, cheddar and sour cream. Genius. Introducing Ruffles, Flamin' Hot Cheddar and Sour Cream. Own your ridges. Back now with our player of the game presented by HDER Link. It is district champion Garrett Spawn of Tiffin Calvert. Joining me right now, Dude, it just seems like you hit a switch in the second half here at the district level where you felt like you needed to be a little bit more aggressive offensively. As a defensive unit, you guys were awesome. But tell me about your individual role and what you felt like it was here, not only against Kerry, but then tonight in the second half. It just seems like you go to another level. Yeah, my uh, my whole, like, what I'm supposed to do is mainly just get people to where they need to be, be that floor general for everyone and get to the rim and then contribute to others. Defensively, you hold them to just four points in that third quarter. That really was the difference in the game. Didn't allow Old Fort to get back into it. Does it feel like throughout the progression of the night, you guys just get stronger and stronger as a defensive team? Yeah, Coach does a good job of making sure we're conditioned for the game. So, I mean, we rotated three guys on their point guard, Casey Plaw. So, I mean, we wore them out. I mean, I wasn't one of them, but our, the other three did a great job on them. This team with the senior class, seven of you guys, it seems like you've got an awesome bond and everyone seems to contribute at different times throughout the season. How special has it been developing throughout the course of this campaign for you? I love playing with all these guys. They're like my brothers. I, we're all excited for each other. I mean, I get just as excited for Nolan when he scores than as when I score, so it's just the unselfishness. Well, it's gotten you to the point, still undefeated, the number one team in the state. You're about to cut down the nets here as district champions. How far does it feel like this train can keep rolling, man? I imagine you guys got to feel like you're, you're a confident team and maybe the favorite to win the whole thing. As far as we want it to go. I believe in each and every one of the players that I play with, and I think we can really make a run for state. I really do. Well, it's definitely, it's been a pleasure watching you uh, since, since we got to make your acquaintance there in the regular season finale. And you guys, you got a spectacular team to watch. Uh, great fan base too, a lot of viewers. If you want to take a look up in this camera and give a shout out to anybody who might be watching. Yeah, my uncle Stevie, hey. and then <laughs> Kent and Lisa Reinbold. All right, so shout out to Stevie and then those two. Hey Garrett, thanks so much for the time, man. Congratulations on being our MVP performer tonight. Thank you for your coverage. Our pleasure, man. Garrett Spahn, 21 points, 13 coming in the second half. Just awesome stuff from him here tonight. All right, Len, I think just about everything's been said in that picture right there, worth a thousand words. Garrett Spahn, big hug and a kiss. Got the medal around his neck. I mean, this seems like a special team, and I agree with him. They can go as far as they want to. If they're locked in and dedicated, I, I haven't seen a – all the teams from around Division Four, but I can't imagine there's too many that can elevate to the level these guys can. Not in Northwest Ohio, that's for sure. Now, what is standing out there around the rest of the state? Sure. That remains to be seen, but uh, from what I have seen in Division Four, this is the team to beat. There's a reason they're ranked number one. There's a reason they're 25 and 0, and uh, I think just like him, they can go as far as they want to go. In any sport, defense wins championships, and uh, they bring it every night. They bring the lunch pail, and they are there to eat their lunch, and they're not going to waste a bite. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then as the comment that came in, Garrett Spawn, a very tasty player. He really is he, He's a, a spectacular specimen because he gets people involved early and then looks for his shot late. So a la like a LeBron James make people feel like they're involved in the matchup but then in the second half when the chips are really on the table he knows when to go all in what i really like about him though is he he just kind of glides out there looks like he's not putting a lot of effort into his dribble drive and then boom he turns it on he kicks it to a new gear and he's past you before you can even blink yeah. and then he has all of his options on the table he can pull up and take the jumper he can dish off he can just keep on going to the hole so he does all of them very well. Go ahead and uh, strap a bow on the season for Old Fort. Got to be a little bit frustrating for them, the fact that they just ran into a superior team this season, couldn't get over that hump. Seemed like they got a, a, a pretty quality collection of talent with a stud in the middle. Just wasn't their year with the buzzsaw of Calvert. Well, I can definitely relate to them because when I played high school basketball, 
Uh, we lost three games to the same state-ranked number one team, Willard, and we lost five all year. Another loss was to number one-ranked Dolphus St. John's, and uh, we lost to Lexington. All those teams made it to state that year. Wow. And uh, when you lose to the same team three times, and in our district final it was a one-point ball game with a last-second jumper by Willard, that, that's like a dagger in your heart. And I'm not sure which is worse, losing on a last-second jumper or losing tonight by 19 because both ways it leaves a salty taste in your mouth. But as for Old Fort, senior Layden, just like Calvert, Probably not going to be the favorites to uh, repeat and do what they did this year again next year because you're going to have to bring in a new class now and those JV players are going to have to start learning what it's like to play varsity basketball and get banged around a little bit more than you do in the, in the JV ranks. So it may be a year off for Old Ford or maybe two years, but you know they have a rich tradition uh, at Old Ford. So... They definitely will reappear. Calvert's had a rich tradition as well, so both of these two teams are senior-laden, and that's what it takes to uh, get this far. Well, one set of seniors, a seven-pack of them for Calvert, all moving on to the regional level as they are district champions yet again. That'll wrap up our coverage here from a fabulous Liberty Benton High School. It's been a fun district tournament to be a part of, but there's no question that the top team here, Tiffin Calvert is going to be a state championship contender as they move on. Big thank yous to all of our incredible sponsors that allow us to bring you these games live and free exclusively on the OH Report, including the Old Fort Banking Company, Burson Bakey's Insurance, Jessica Gosman, Real Estate Agent, HDER Link, Frito Lay, and the Freedom Festival Ohio. For Max Sinatra, and Lynn Passett, all the people that helped make this game possible back at the OH Report Studios. I'm Brian Skaronski saying so long from Finland.